Barclay writes this, one of our, one, excuse me, our great security against sin lies in being shocked at it. Beware of the normalization of deviance, someone said. It often happens that when evils first emerge, people are shocked and disturbed at them. But as time goes on, they begin to cease to be shocked at them and to accept them as a matter of course. Can you just examine your heart for a moment to see where, where has that happened with me? Where am I caving in? Where, where are things not quite so shocking to me? Listen, we understand people's sin, the reality of sin. We're not surprised at sin, but we should be shocked at the depths that our own heart can go to. We see in Lot a man who hates the sinful unrighteousness of the city of Sodom, we said earlier, and yet was in love with that culture. Let me ask you, what credibility does the compromised life give to you? What credibility does the compromised life give to you? None. Lot lost it, even with his own family. All that he told them was that God was going to judge sin and they could only laugh about it. I mean, he said to them like the least thing you could say. He didn't give them a big, long explanation. He said, listen, God's going to judge this sinful city. You think if everybody's going to agree with that, God's got to judge sin. They laugh about it. Such basic knowledge of God was treated as completely foreign to them and completely unbelievable by two men who were going to marry his daughters. How could that be? Because compromise leaves you with no credibility. What else does compromising biblical convictions do? I'll tell you this. If your goal in life is to be faithful, compromise does not lead to that goal. You want to be faithful to the Lord? You want to walk with the Lord? Compromise doesn't lead that way. Compromise corrupts. Lot would choose heaven over hell every time someone said, but he would choose earth over heaven. He loved the world in which he lived, and he made compromises to live in that world. Was Sodom any better for Lot's existence? No. Was Lot any better for living in Sodom? No. Not a single person in Sodom took Lot seriously. We understand people are responsible for their own actions. I understand that you and I have witnessed the people before who shrug it off and laugh it off and don't want to hear it. We're talking about a man who had a position of authority for 25 years in this place, and it's consumed, and there's not one person who says, yes, I believe what Lot's saying. I believe, based on his testimony, God is just. God's going to judge, and let's get out of here. It's frightening. Those who knew Lot best, we said earlier, his family seemed to know God the least. Look at the actions of his sons-in-law, of his daughters, and of his wife. People wouldn't even respond to the basic call to flee God's judgment on sin. They thought it was ludicrous. Whatever motives Lot had at the beginning, he compromised. None of us believe Lot went there with this idea. 25 years from now, I'm going to get out of here in judgment while the whole city is rained down with fire and brimstone. My lot, my wife's going to be turned to a pillar of salt. I'm going to commit these acts with my daughter and not even realize I'm doing it in drunkenness. He never, we're not saying he thought that. That's just the point, isn't it? takes you further than you want to go and compromise. Lot was righteous enough to hate sin, but he wasn't righteous enough to do anything about it. Do you find yourself there? Do you find that nature at all, that principle in yourself? You just want to be accepted by the world? 